Hey, what's up guys? This is ICF Kills, and today we got a full-on guide and tutorial for the custom map Eternal Bliss. This is one of the new custom maps that are entried into Node.js 456 um, Escape Room Contest. So let's dive in. The first thing you want to do when you spawn in is find a shovel. One minute you find a shovel, you want to go ahead and check dig sites around this area, which is going to allow you to dig up a skull so you can get out of this area. So once you find this skull, well, I think I found it in my second dig site, uh, right here, pick it up, and then you can exit the building. Next part here is centuries of the dam, 1200 meters until the surface. This one, you want to go ahead and dig these dig sites right here, and you're looking for a key so you can open up the gate to get out of this small area. Uh, no zombies will spawn at this point, but you do have to uh, find the key which spawns zombies, so you don't have to deal with them. But once you find the key, you can go ahead and exit. Next, once you exit the gate, you're going to need to find two stones to unlock the... A uh, little lockdown you have to do right there in the middle. The first stone is going to be on the left side of spawn. If you make your way up the stairs right here. And you go ahead and interact with the stone. It will drop you in this building. And this is kind of like a little mini lockdown. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to survive here until the door opens. Uh, it doesn't last too long. Maybe 30, well, probably like a little bit, maybe 45 seconds to a minute. But once the door is open, you can go ahead and exit. Just be a little bit careful because they do spawn uh, on the ground and they do come through the windows. So just, uh, you know, make your best judgments. But as soon as the door opens, you can go ahead and exit. Next stone location is opposite side of the map uh, where this fire torch is. What you need to do here is you need to break the wood down, three uh, planks of wood, and then you'll gain access uh, in this building. Once you get access, you want to step on this plate and it will allow you, uh, will actually open up a secret door so you can get the next stone. Lead the zombies away and go ahead and access the secret door uh, right here. Go ahead and pick up your stone. Once you do, you need to exit through that first door that opens up and you're going to need to take care of this skeleton dude uh, with just your melee weapon. Now, his attacks, and you got to get used to it because you're going to have to deal with this throughout this whole Easter egg. He keeps spawning uh, unkillable skeletons. Now, they don't do much damage, but if all, you know, all of them hit you plus he hits you, it's a down. Or if you're dealing with two skeletons and all those skulls hit you, it's a down. But he does have a crazy little slam attack that you just saw. Pretty nuts. But just kind of use your best judgment and take him out. Once he's dead, the door will open up and you can go ahead and exit. Now you want to make your way to the middle, gather up all the zombies, and what you're going to need to do is start a lockdown, which this is basically a soul box. Just be careful here because the skeletons will spawn, um, but don't worry about them. Just worry about the zombies. Be careful, melee one at a time, and it'll be over. Once done, the fire will go away and another new door will open up. And kind of use the, the torches as kind of waypoints. It kind of points you where you need to go eventually. So make your way up this little stairway. And once you do, we can get started to the next section. Next section here is Fires of the Earth, 7,000 meters until the surface. Once you spawn in, you're going to notice that you have some chests, which is just, this is basically your reward for completing each section. So go ahead and pick your poison, whatever weapon you like to choose. And there's two chests in the section. Uh, usually one chest gives you weapons and one chest gives you perks, but sometimes you'll have a, a little mixture of both. Just make your best selections and we can move on to the next part. You want to go ahead and make your way up this little hill, hill here and you're going to have to do some math. Now, what I found is that this is the same in every run, so hopefully this doesn't change because there's a gong step two that's the same on every run, and if it ever gets randomized, I don't know if I'll ever want to do it again, to be honest, but uh, this is the same every run, so it's going to be the same in your game. 
on my run, uh, well, it's going to be your run too. It's 725 minus 471, which is 254. Now, how these levers work is it's already set on one. And then when you first interact with it, that's two, then three, then four, and so on. So just make sure that when you already interact with it, it's um, you know that once you hit it once, it's already on two. So we enter 254 there, and we're on to the next step, which is the lockdown. Once you're uh, done with the math, uh, go ahead and interact with this little center thing here, and it'll start a lockdown. Now, this is not a soul box. I think it's timed, so you don't have to really kill zombies if your you know, life depends on it. So once it's done, we'll move on to the next step. Once done, just kind of be careful because there's not really a clear path in here. But what you need to do is drop down to the left, and you want to make your way down this passage so you can get to the next area. Once you make your way, you jump on this little platform here. It's going to start rising. And once it gets to the top, you'll have another pass or path uh, to, to uh, traverse. Once it's all the way to the top, go ahead and do a little parkour. And coming up is going to be another math problem. And this is the same, like I ran it three times already, and it's been the same each and every time. So it's probably going to be the same for you. And you just got to do the same thing. Pull these levers uh, to give the right problem or to give the right uh, equation. So what I have to enter in is three, one, five. And you got to do this kind of a little bit careful. Um, what I would do is kind of kill the horde behind you um, and take it down to a manageable amount until they're all down and then interact uh, with levers. But uh, this one is three, one, five. We didn't have to touch the middle one because it's already set on one. So we'll set this one on five and then our pathway is open. Make your way uh, to this little pedestal over here, and you want to stand on it just like you did on Shang, which that's going to allow you to go ahead and grab um, or interact with a portal button. That's going to allow you to move on to the next uh, step here. So interact with this little portal here, and it's going to start a lockdown. Um, then once the lockdown's over, then the path is going to be uh, opened. This is just another time thing, but as soon as it's over, the fire will go away and the path will be open. So what you want to do is just make your way over here and then make your way up the stairs and you can get to the next part of the map. Last part here is just head into the dark, dark room. Next part here is you want to make your way up and we're going to be entering another section, the Cliffs of Emptiness, 2600 meters until the surface. On this one, just like the ones before, you get a little reward uh, chest looting. Um, if this happens to you in your game, and you, all you need to do is aim down sights uh, for you to pick up the perk. Some reason I was getting that glitch, but uh, if it does happen to you, just go ahead and aim down sight, and then, then they will allow you to grab it. So make your selections, and uh, go ahead and move on. Once you make your selections, you're going to notice there's a gong here. You just want to go ahead and hit it, and it'll open this portal, and it'll allow you to move on. Um, what you'll need to do is just move on until you see this little black, smoky kind of area. What you need to do is you need to kill a zombie on the platform, and it will start building the platform for you. So if you just make your way up, and as they spawn, shoot it, and then you'll be able to walk through Make your way up, and you're going to have to do the same thing in this section. Make your way up, and go ahead and continue traveling. You're going to make your way up to the cave, and you're going to make your left here. And what's going to happen here is you're going to have a little lockdown stuck with two skeletons. So just take your time. Um, don't get hit by their skulls, because since there's two of them, they spawn in six, which if all six hit you, um, you will be downed. So just, you know, kind of run in a circle, do damage um, safely, and eventually they will die. Once you kill them, the door will open up, and you'll notice that uh, two doors will open up. Just don't do what I did. I always, for some reason, take the wrong door and start going back where I came from, like right there. If you noticed that you see these little pillars there, you went the wrong way, just hop back up, and then it's going to be your first door on the right. Once you get up to the platform here, you got to do the same thing. You got to build your platform so you can traverse up. So just keep that in mind as you go up and do it as safely as you can.
once you build your platform, you're going to notice that there's three gongs here. The one by itself, I numbered it as one, and this is always going to be the same order every time that you do this. The first one you want to hit is this first left one, which is two. Next one you want to hit is one, which is this one. The next one you want to hit is three, and it's going to go ahead and open up a portal for you to move on. Once you've done that, go ahead and hop in, and we can do more gongs. It will spawn in a skeleton, so once you uh, finish this guy and kill him, uh, we can go ahead and explain how the gongs work. Once he's dead, go ahead and make your way across the bridge. And kind of the same difference here, the bridge is kind of your marker. Um, you have three gongs uh, to the left of the bridge and three gongs to the right of the bridge. We number it um, left to right, so um, basically works out one, two, three, four, five, six, but this is how it works. This is number one, this is number two, that's number three, this is number four, that's number five, and that's number six. Just to make it a little bit more clear, I have it numbered here. So looking straight, and I'm standing right in front uh, of the uh, bridge, we're going to have one, two, three on the left, four is right there in the middle, five is right there in the middle right, and then six is all the way to our right. That's how we're going to number these gongs. So the combination is always going to be five, two, four, one, three, six. So the first one we're going to hit here is five. And then we're going to go over here to two. And then we're going to go to four, which is the one in the middle. And then we're going to head to one, which is the one closest to the bridge. And then we're going to hit number three, which is the one towards our left side here. And then we're going to hit the last one, which is number six. Now I'm hoping this doesn't change. Like this doesn't get randomized because this step is a freaking nightmare. Uh, I'm tone deaf, so I can't, I don't know which one is higher pitch or a low pitch when I just hear a beeping sound. Uh, so it was really kind of hard for me. So big shout out to smart guy who uh, figured this out. He happens to have a music degree is what he said on the stream. So uh, I guess this step was pretty much easy for him. So I appreciate it, smart guy. Thank you, man, because I don't think I would have uh, gotten past this part if it wasn't for him. So GG's Forest of the Lost, 1350 meters from the surface. Let's get this. Just like uh, every time that you completed each section, you want to go ahead and loot your chests. But this time you want to do it kind of quick because zombies will uh, spawn. So pick up your rewards and we'll go ahead and explain this section. This section is actually uh, pretty simple. You just need to fill four soul boxes around the area that are pillars and we'll go over where they are now. From this middle section here, you just want to go ahead and look to your left. And one of the pillars will be kind of uh, right in the middle, or well, at least close to the middle. You want to go ahead and start filling it up. You'll notice uh, when it's done, when the pillar turns purple. All right, so it seems like this one is all finished. We can go on to the next pillar. Now, what I like to do is kind of like hug the corners uh, once I get that one closest to the middle. Uh, that way, these pillars are a little bit easier to find. This area is a little bit dark, so it could be a little bit hard to spot out the pillars. But if you just kind of hug the corners and check the middle and the walls, um, you, won't, you won't be able to miss them. Especially once you start filling up um, two of them, then three of them, then the fourth one will be easy to find because it won't be, uh, it will be a pillar that's not lit purple. All right, this one is all done, so we'll move on to the next pillar. Same thing, kind of just hug the, the arena wall, check the middle. You know, kind of scan around as you're walking around, and you will be able to find the next one. Once you find it, which this one is actually kind of closer to the middle than the wall, um, go ahead and start filling it up. Same thing, once it turns purple, we'll go ahead and move on. All right, this one's all done. Let's go ahead and scout out for the last one. Last one's a little bit closer uh, to the wall here. So you have two that's close to the wall. And once you fill up uh, this last pillar, you'll be able to go back to the middle and basically take the elevator up. Once it's purple, go ahead and make your way back to the middle. And like I said, it's going to be like the elevator. So it's going to bring you up to the next section. Just 
just like the rest, uh, once you finish this section, you get your rewards. So don't forget to grab your rewards. Um, I would pick something that has uh, like a lot of bullet. I, I liked using the PPSH. It was really good. And also the MG, um, especially when you have Speed Cola. Those are pretty good for the boss fights. So go ahead and pick your rewards and we'll go ahead and uh, go over the boss fight. Also on a side note, just to let you know, there's no quick revives that you have to actually pick up as a perk. You automatically get three quick revives um, and then no more after that. So basically, you know, you only get four downs and end of the game kind of thing. So just keep that in mind uh, as you progress. Once you've made your selections, go ahead and go to the dark hallway and the boss fight will start. Now the boss fight is pretty amazing, to be honest. I'm very much impressed at this boss fight and it's really challenging the the four little markers you see there in his chest plate once you destroy all four of them um two on the left two on the right um you'll be able to finish this boss but each time you finish a portion of his chest plate he will disappear and then come back kind of like uh, you know sections be careful in this area though as you can see right there i got stuck uh, on the terrain just for a little bit of, of a ledge um one zombie got me stuck and i was down so as you kind of you know train up here just kind of make your like little tiny jumps uh, when you notice there's a little bit of a you know crevice or the kind of like a stairway because these things will trip you up so just kind of be careful he also does have an attack where he kind of slams his his tail to the ground and lifts you up and um, that's one of his main attacks and the other main attack is throwing fire on the ground uh, i think he only has two well, at least those are the two that i notice but the fire does hurt a lot and the, the ground pound does hurt a lot um and it could actually lift you to the lava on the sides um, if he does do that there's only one way uh, to get back up to the platform from the lava so you got to kind of walk around this little island here until you see a platform up so as you can see right there i finished one of his uh, chest plates and he's disappearing and he goes away for like 20 seconds or so comes back and another phase will start once he comes back just the same as before aim for his one of his chest plates and as soon as you break one, he will disappear again. And once you do enough damage, the same thing as before, he will go away for about 20, 30 seconds. The biggest attack is when he's throwing you up in the air like that. See right there, if I fell in the lava, I pretty much would have been dead because I wouldn't have found the entrance to get back up in time before the lava kills me. It's a tick damage, so you just want to be careful. So as you see, that's the third chest we destroyed. And the lava is now rising rapidly after that third piece. And it basically shortens your playing field to very tiny, small area. So just do your best to train the zombies. Um, you may want to, um, you know, hoard them up a little bit. But as you can see, it, it could be dangerous. So do your best in this area. And once the dragon returns, do a little bit of damage and the lava eventually will go away. It's kind of like a, a lockdown. Uh, it's only here for maybe a minute and a half or so, maybe two minutes, and then uh, it goes away. But as you can see right here, almost fell down to the lava again. And, and you know, that's already the third time in this boss fight that he almost put me into the lava. So that's definitely one of his most dangerous attacks not to mention him putting more fire on the field and as you can see the lava is now decreased so we can uh, have a little bit bigger playing field and that way we can finish the last chess piece here and finish this boss fight now this boss fight is a ton of fun because of how difficult it can get and sometimes just like right there the dragon lifting you up in the air could save your life. It, it literally almost killed me again. The same little ledge almost killed me again. And the dragon just keeps lifting me up in the air. But we only need to put a little bit more damage into him. And then he should be done. And we can move on to the end of the Easter egg. Now the only last thing you need to do is head to this boat here on the left hand side. And GG's you have completed Eternal Abyss. Now guys... If this is a tutorial that helped you out, please 
Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. And hope you guys are enjoying this maps as much as I am. Love all these constant maps. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care now.